Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit Sessions. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Today I'm coming at you with episode 61. Yes, 61, we are there. Um, I have Tiffany Kirkshank on the show, and I gotta tell you guys, I was totally fangirling before I actually started the show. Um, I've been following Tiffany for quite a while. She is not only just a rad human, um, I had such a great time recording this episode with her, I've never laughed that hard on the show, but she's also just a straight up badass. I mean, the girl knows her stuff. She's been studying for a really, really, really long time. She's super passionate about blending the worlds of East to West, and it, I mean, it was just a joy to have her on the show. I, I, I mean, I can't, yeah, I was, I was blown away to, 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 to just even be able to, to chat with her. Plus, I highly recommend you check out the amazing Brett Larkin's online yoga teacher training. Brett offers the most respected and interactive online yoga teacher training courses that gives a flexible way for you to become a registered yoga teacher and really change your life. The truly great thing about studying online is that it offers so much more flexibility and allows you to learn at your own pace. Plus, once you sign up, the resources are yours to keep forever. Although it's online, it's still intimate and personalized to your own needs. As you send in pictures and videos of you doing poses, and course guides send you specific feedback. Plus, Brett shares her secrets on how to gain an online following so you can become your own online yoga teacher. And remember, those of you that are already teachers can take the program at a discounted rate for continuing education credits with Brett. So head over to brettlarkin.com forward slash Danny. Again, that's brettlarkin.com forward slash Danny, which is linked in the show notes below. To download the brochure that has tons of information on the course and how you can transform your life in just a few short months. And don't forget to use the coupon code Danny when you sign up to get $100 off the course. Yup, that's $100 off the course if you use the coupon code Danny, D-A-N-N-I. You know I'm going to ask you to leave a review, right? So if you like the show, please remember to head to iTunes and leave a review. It helps spread the show to your friends, um, just lets more people know about the show. Um, and uh, as always, I'll give you a high five for, uh, for doing it. And last but not least, big love to our friends over at SF Yoga Magazine who continue to support and love the show. Without further ado, here goes episode 61. Hello, Tiffany. Hey. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I am, um, well, if I'm being honest, I'm fangirling right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I have been following your work, actually, uh, before I was a teacher and before I was really, uh, like, into, like, really into yoga and and the reason why was because you had your um your acupuncture story and i thought i wanted to go to, to school to be an acupuncturist while i was practicing yoga and then i decided school was not my jam um i gave it literally the old college try where i went to college and then was like no this is not for me <laughs> good for you for knowing <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I tried okay i tried no but i like you know i've, I've been following your work and your teaching and uh, it's it's cool to um well one it's cool to see you know different teachers doing their own thing i mean I, I love the diversity and i love i actually love when teachers challenge one another in in a really cool way like you know like well actually there's this approach and there's this approach and there's this approach and you've really i mean you've created your own, you know, yoga medicine and, 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 and really ran with it. And it's so cool. You offer like so many programs and it's kind of cool from afar. I've seen you like grow and do different things as well, which is really super cool. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Sometimes I look back on it now too, and I'm, I'm surprised at where it is. I never would have imagined. So I feel really grateful too. I feel really lucky to have it. Do you ever wake up and you're just like, how, like, this is for real? <laughs> yes. What's the, most, like, what's the most surprising part of all of it? I mean, I'm always surprised when, when so many people show up to hear me talk about things. I'm like, okay, well, you know, everyone's really happy and grateful. And at the end, I'm like, well, you know, if you guys weren't here, I'd just be the crazy mad scientist talking to themselves this whole time. <laughs> you know? What's the difference between some crazy person on the street and, you know, someone who have, you know, hundreds of people show up to hear them speak. <laughs> right, 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 right. Totally, totally. I always love that. I mean, I think I was at a 
medical conference this past week and you know you see this like scientists get up there and they share their work and they're you know they're all nervous and 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 everyone's so appreciative and excited and they're just you know happy learning about their work and I feel kind of like that person where I've just kind of had this all these exciting things that I have found working with students and patients over the years and I'm just I'm just excited that other people are excited to learn about it. <laughs> Nerds unite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Have you always been um I mean, okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions but like now I feel like I'm I'm just all over right now. Like have you always <laughs> have you always been I mean, quote unquote, we'll say nerdy or just like super yeah sick or into the body like it was just always a thing for you or I mean I've definitely been an a nerdy person my whole life kind of I guess I was the I don't know I never really had a a specific place I feel like I fit in when I was a kid and kind of like a an outlier I guess um yeah, I'm, I'm a misfit, maybe. There, boom. <laughs> yeah, and I think for me, finding this at such a young age was just really like a, a coming home to being okay with that, being, you know, being able to settle into the fact that I was different. I mean, even in my own family, I was always kind of the black sheep and people, my family was always unsure of what I was doing and um, a little that. uncomfortable with it, yeah. pretty uncomfortable with it. So I think now it's just nice. It's cool to see yoga become, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, but it's really cool to see yoga become more generally accepted and to have those moments of like, oh, okay. <laughs> it comes back around full circle. You're like, I'm not the only crazy one. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not that crazy anymore. I haven't changed, but you guys have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. How did it all like, I mean, so how did it all start? So I know you practice yoga, you practiced yoga for a bit and then you were an acupuncturist for Nike and, and you did some other stuff with it, but then it came kind of back around into the yoga realm, right? So let's, where did it all start for you as far as like, okay, this is where the journey, where do you think the journey began for you? Well, for me, it really began when I was um, 14 and I was a troublemaker. My parents sent me on a, a wilderness program <laughs> for troubled teenagers oh, and, no uh, way. one of the one of the trail guides was an herbalist and he would take me out on plant walks he was really excited because you know no one else was really interested and <laughs> I was so excited and um yeah I mean learning how to survive was as a 14 year old was really empowering but then also um learning how to heal learning medicine i think was really interesting i went home and you know i i have pictures <laughs> i dug up recently of like my bedroom just like full of all these herbs i was drying and collecting and all these potions i was creating for family and friends and myself and um yeah, i made all my own everything from shampoo to deodorant to like everything and um so you went just, from trouble troublemaker to hippie yeah, I mean, pretty much, but yeah. I was really excited about learning how to heal and was really interested in books about herbalism and using, you know, nature around you that, you know, the best medicine is found all mm -hmm. around you. And anyways, I apprenticed with an herbalist. And at the same time, when I got back from that wilderness experience, there was this little sign I saw that had yoga and a phone number. And there weren't any studios at the time where I lived in, in Phoenix and um, nor were there, I think, many anywhere else. But um and so I finally remembered it and I started going and it was just, um, you know, my teacher leading out of a, a chiropractor's office, a few other people. And then he invited me eventually to his house. He had a little um, room out of his garage that he, we would practice in. And, um, and so uh, I just became really intrigued by it. I mean, I think as everyone, there's, there's a physicality. I grew up really athletic and pay, played competitive tennis when I was younger and I think there was a physicality to it, which really drew me in, but there's, you know, there's always, there's something more that keeps you around, which, you know, you don't really know when you're 14, what that is, or even, even ever, maybe, maybe it's something intangible, but, yeah. um, yeah. So I, that was when I first became really excited about it. I, I graduated early. I, I got, I was just sick of high school and I did it all really quickly, uh, finish it up early and, and started college at 16. And when I went away, there wasn't really any yoga. So I took a teacher training and, started, you know, teaching people. And I, I didn't, you know, I never stopped. I mean, even through, I remember in Chinese. So when I was in college, I apprenticed with an acupuncturist and fell in love with that. And I looked at a bunch of different styles of medicine from Ayurveda to naturopathic to Western medicine and, mm -hmm. and really liked, you know, the art of Chinese medicine. So I remember 
when I, you know, I finished my pre-med undergrad and then I went to Chinese med and I remember my parents saying to me, <laughs> I'll never forget this. Like, how come, how come you're still teaching yoga? Cause I was teaching like 10 classes and I was taking 13 <laughs> classes a quarter. And my mom, I remember her saying to me like, why are you still teaching yoga when you know, when you get a, you're going to quit when you get a real job, <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> which was funny because even to them, you know, acupuncture, it was this crazy weird thing. Right, and, yeah. um, and that, but that was a real job compared to yoga. <laughs> I once had someone tell me, I kid you not, I was at, I was, so I'm, you know, I'm from the West Coast and I was uh, I'm from San Diego, well, from LA and then San Diego. And I, I, one of my best friends from San Diego moved to New York and very much was in the New York scene. And so I went out for one of his birthdays um, and I was sitting at totally like out of place. I wasn't dressed like the way everyone was, <laughs> Just, you know, typical Danny, like yeah, I was the only one tattooed there and you know, whatever, it was fine. And we're going, there was like 20 people at a dinner table and I was sitting next to this guy and someone was talking about PR and someone was talking about something else and finances. And the guy was like, oh, well, what do you do? You know? And I was like, oh, I teach yoga. And he looks at me dead in the face and he goes, oh, that's a thing. <laughs> it's just like, um, <laughs> yeah. Listen, and how many years ago was that? <laughs> like four years ago, actually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, but you know, it's, I mean, wow. this is, this is our normal, you know, like this is what we do. And so we like, you know, but for a lot of people, whether you're in, you know, wherever you come from, this may not be your normal. So you may not understand it. And normally when we say things like that, it's because we don't understand them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like our parents, like, when are you going to, when are you going to get a real job? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was, I think there's all those, you know, like back then we were the, we were the hippies in the nineties and now, you know, now we're like the Instagram people. And, you know, this day yeah. I was sitting at a sushi bar, jet lagged and eating really early the other day. And there were some people at the bar, probably like five or six guys in their forties. And, and they were talking about, you know, they were drunk and they were talking about, and they were talking about like, Oh, some yoga teacher. I was like, Oh God. So now yoga teacher is like a floozy. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> the, the, like the portrait of a yoga teacher has changed so many times and I'm, it's just, it's hard to keep up now. <laughs> I always think about too, when people are like, Oh, like what's your job? Like, I don't have a job. And they're like, well, what's your career? I'm like, I don't have that. And they're like, well, what do you do? I'm like, I have my passion and that's what I get to do every day. I don't, yeah. have, I don't, have, I don't have a job. I don't have a career. I have my passion every single day. They're all secretly jealous. Oh, hands down. Like <laughs> we get to wear, we wear pajamas every day. Yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. fun not wearing stretchy pants all the time. Bozos. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And it's funny because I see so many people coming in from the medical world, coming in and wanting to be like wanting to switch careers because they've, well, and by that time they've already got like a million dollars of debt and <laughs> right. Right. And, um, right. you know, people like a, we had a neuro radiologist come in and he was leaving. I mean, that's like a 13, I don't know, like a 13 years of, I don't know if that's schooling or residency. I think it's a, I think it's a 10 year residency or so for neuro radiology. I mean, on top of all your school, it's like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like you're committed at that point. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, and then, and then they're so fed up with it because they're, you know, overworked and underpaid for, you know, the amount of debt that they have. And right. I mean, obviously pay varies from person to person, but yeah, they're all, it, it's, yeah, it's a tough time and it's an interesting time in the medical world. And Wait, pay's not equal all the way across the board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, wait, this, this is the thing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> when you get your medical degree, everyone gets the same paycheck. <laughs> right. Especially girls, right? Yeah, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Women, men, yeah, old, young. I remember so, that graduating from Chinese medicine school. There was this funny thing. Like I had been apprenticing for four years through college and reading books and studying and just like so intrigued by it. And then there were these people who were, you know, in their 50s who were coming as a second or third career who didn't know anything about Chinese medicine. And somehow when we graduated, like, you know, these older, older graduates were revered as these like wise and, and, and I was just some young little kid, which I totally get now. I mean, I think life experience is really valuable, but at the same time. You know, I had been you studying your shit, for so, a long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but. you you did all this you did you did all this studying, and then you know you 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 so you were teaching yoga, and then like what what was the kicker then where you decided okay this is all fun and dandy, and I've got like these two modalities that I'm working with, I'm gonna blend them and make my own shit just go boom, you know. 
I mean, I don't know that there was a moment. I think, I mean, I was teaching teacher trainings ever since like 2002 or 2003. I was just running them out of my house and they weren't like yoga alliance teacher trainings. They were just, you know, me teaching because at the time there weren't a lot of teacher trainings and there were teachers who didn't have trainings. And so I was just kind of sharing the knowledge that I had learned because I had done some trainings and, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I, you know, I, when I graduated from Chinese medicine school and started seeing patients, I just noticed like I was a majority of my patients were yoga students who, you know, had injuries for whatever reason. And, um, you know, that's the nice thing about yoga is you can't really, you can't really let your injuries go because you're just so aware of them rather than someone sitting at their desk who can just kind of ignore it for months or years. Um, Anyway, so I had a lot of a lot of patients who were yoga students and you know over time I just kind of started to notice that you know they got better so much quicker than my patients who didn't do yoga. So I started giving them what I called yoga prescriptions, which was just, you know, one to three poses, nothing fancy, yeah. simple mm-hmm. stuff and and just found it really helpful and at the time I was I was leading 200 hour teacher trainings and I was doing more in the Ashtanga realm and um and then kind of somewhere around that time I also hurt myself and was just like it was like a big slap in the face like you know, my specialty has always been sports medicine. So I was working with patients for orthopedic issues and, and, um, and not really completely also bringing that into my teachings because I was teaching vinyasa and ashtanga, but not really like, not really bringing them together like I felt I could or I should be. So when I had my back injury, I, it was kind of a wake up call to, really formalizing that more because I was working with patients and I was doing some of it with student with uh, yoga students, but I wasn't really kind of bringing it into the teacher training. So you got a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of forced me to wake up and it just kind of slowly evolved into being more, I don't know, I, I kind of struggle with the word therapeutic yoga, because to me, I think for someone in the yoga in the yoga world, we kind of associate therapeutic yoga with more restorative modalities. But to me, therapeutic yoga is yoga that meets the individual. It's, you know, and sometimes that's movement, sometimes that's restorative, you know, and anything in between. I mean, and let's get real too, that what you call you, like, there's so like vinyasa, what the hell does that mean these days? You know, like (laughs) it's anything like people ask, I I mean, I've said this multiple times, people are like, Danny, what do you teach? And I'm like, I teach yoga. They're like, what kind of yoga? Pirate yoga. Well, what's pirate yoga? I take all the (laughs) shit that I like and I leave all the shit that I don't like. That's done. <laughs> take what works for yeah, take Pirate what works for you and then do, yeah. I love it. It's good. I mean, and really essentially, like the only thing that's important is that your name communicates what it is you're teaching. I think being able to meet people's expectations is the most important thing. So if you have a description or a name that doesn't suit what you're actually doing, then it's not really serving its purpose. But right. if whoever it is, if you know you want to serve the yoga demographic and people who know what, you know, vinyasa is which again is a, is a hard one because it it doesn't really mean it a lot specific other than that maybe it's a movement based practice right um if that works for you then great I, I mean it's it's hard i've struggled with names i think for i i teach a little bit locally i have one now what do i call it now i think i call it um uh, mindful vinyasa that's so funny that's actually how i describe it's uh, you should like that's my thing i i describe myself as a mindful vinyasa teacher yeah <laughs> what, what the hell does that mean i don't really know <laughs> <laughs> well i mean to me i think it means you know there's like some cookie cutter classes which is great you know like i think there's i really struggle with that as a person who goes to classes too is like sometimes it's nice to go to a cookie cutter class and know what you're getting and just like be able to show up versus sometimes you go to some where you know the, the teacher is really excited about something and then they end up talking about doing handstands for half the class and you're like i just wanted to move right, <laughs> you right. know like i actually didn't want a workshop <laughs> but that was interesting but like i've got an hour and i really wanted to move and you know we're just like anyone else as yoga teachers busy and you know trying to fit it in our schedules and i thought about uh, doing um oh well, man I'm, I'm, i don't know if i should say this out loud on the show but whatever <laughs> i mean here it goes i thought about changing the name of some of my classes like because they're all right now they're just like vinyasa all the way all the way through right but i thought about doing vinyasa breakdown where you get some movement and then you also get like okay let's come on down for a second let's chat about this this and this and then let's pick it up again and that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but, but not and then i get to add more element of like some drill work or like you know some skills in there where we get to kind of stop and feel the things and then do the things in our body again yeah but 
Are people actually going to read the description or people just go to the class because it fits in their schedule? <laughs> well, I think you hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be those people who just go because it fits in their schedule, which is fine. And they might be happy with anything. I just think it's so important as a teacher, whether it's workshops or trainings or classes, like meeting expectations, like being really clear so that, you know, everyone's short on time these days, you know, and I think there's something really great to being able to break things down and have workshopping or, or have it intermittent with drills or whatever that might be teaching. And then, you know, sometimes it's, I don't know, I struggle with that because as a teacher, it's hard because I, sometimes I want to show up and I want to teach myofascial and vinyasa. And sometimes I want to teach restorative and vinyasa. And sometimes I just want to move and challenge people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to have to be stuck to a name, but yeah. at the same time as a user, it's just so nice to be able to like, you know, go and, and get what you need. Let's just call all classes yoga. That's it. Nothing else. Yoga, <laughs> and you just have to come in with an open mind. Like you yeah, just have to be okay with it. Vinyasa, yoga is like a box of chocolates. Okay. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's true. You kind of have to have that. I think being open to knowing that you can get something out of anything too, which is hard because, you know, students come in and they're like, oh, I want my thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? What? A, so let's like. So yoga medicine, right? That's your. I mean, that's your thing. That's your. That's what has made it. I mean, what have you done with the curriculum? And I know you're doing a few different programs now. You actually are, are like one of the few that has like a thousand hour program, which is super rad. Um, what are you doing different in your curriculum? Or like what? Like if someone was to come up and say, "Hey, Tiffany, what is yoga medicine?" Like, what's your what's your elevator speech for it? Well, I mean, the the big thing for us is just that our purpose is bridging the gap between yoga and the medical world. So mm -hmm. training our teachers in the fusion of East and West. So, you know, we do a lot more of the anatomy and physiology so that teachers understand the what, why, and how. One thing that drives me nuts in the yoga world, especially in the therapeutic world, is this like cookie cutter mentality of like, here, do Supta Baddha Konasana and it's going to fix all your hormonal problems or like PMS, great, Supta Baddha Konasana or, you know, like... <laughs> And then, and then, you know, do this for your low back pain or do this for headaches, which never made any sense to me. It always drove me crazy. Like, how come they can put these in these books and not even at, like at least describe why or how, or even if you were to just say, you know, they've done this for thousands of years and energetically it's supposed to influence this. I, it kind of drove me mad to go like, who's deciding this? Well, and also, don't you, I mean, as a, like, as a practitioner, you know, don't you have to diagnose an individual as an individual because <laughs> all the symptoms are going to be completely yeah. different and the way that things are presenting themselves are going to be completely different. And like you said, like, you can't just say, here's the magic pill that one size fits all because it just doesn't work that way. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me as a Chinese medicine practitioner, you know, you could have 10 people come in with headaches and they'd all have a different diagnosis, mm -hmm. you know, and a, and a different treatment. And, you know, I really feel felt strongly like as a as a yoga teacher that you can't just take one pose and it works for everyone with the same problem. And so what I wanted to do was was really, you know, teach our teachers how to understand the body for themselves, both from an Eastern and Western. So we do, you know, a lot of anatomy and physiology, but also, you know, Western medicine doesn't have all the answers, neither does Chinese medicine, so or Ayurveda or any of them. So, you know, being able to layer these different modalities so that they could really learn to think for themselves rather than go to a yoga book and, you know, take some cookie cutter, which, you know, for some is nice. It's nice. I mean, I if if we had all the answers and it was that easy just to go to a book and say, Oh, you have low back pain, this is the thing, wouldn't that be wonderful? But it it's it doesn't really work that way. So right. yeah. Yeah. And, and my, you know, for me, you, you mentioned this a little bit earlier too, is like, there's no wrong way. I don't think there, I think it's really rare that there's right or wrong in the yoga world as far right. as like alignment or technique. It's really just about understanding who you're working with and, and not just the anatomy and physiology and the Chinese medicine, but their mind and yeah. their orientation and like mm -hmm. what, what feels good to them. So there's, there's just so many moving parts. I struggled with that for a really, really, really long time. If I'm being completely honest, the, 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 the first time that that actually really clicked was earlier this year. A couple of years ago, I decided to do like a training a year, right? Just to kind of like keep myself up to date, make sure that I'm, what I'm offering, uh, offering is like fresh and new. And so I'm, I'm in this training right now and I'm, I'm getting ready to, to, to wrap it up. And one of the teachers, uh, Rocky Heron, brilliant guy, super cool dude from LA, um, all into biomechanics and just, just really smart dude. 
And we were, I think we were doing an example of like warrior two. And like, we were talking about strides and how we set it up. And, and we got into this conversation about like, you know, like weight bearing load on joints and how there's no necessarily bad joint position per se, but it's, you know, the amount of weight that you put on it and how, like, I just, I was like, so what's the right or wrong way? And he's like, that's the thing. There is no right or wrong way. I'm like, well, how do I, wait a minute, how do I go back and tell everyone that I just taught 200 hour teacher trainings that that's <laughs> what I told them was false, you know, yeah. but it's not, it's more understand. I think what people forget is like, you know, these, uh, you know, these poses, which aren't sacred you know, are, we're taught a certain way back in the day, you know, in, in certain schools of yoga, because this is what it looks like. But the more that we've learned and studied throughout the years, you understand that the body works differently or that certain bodies are never going to do certain things. So we adapt the things to fit that body. Well, and, and like, think about it in a, in a time context too. I mean, in India, 300 years ago, or even let's say 70 years ago, you know, did our bodies need something different than what they need now in 2018 in America sitting at a desk all day Um, or on a couch watching Netflix. (laughs) And then on top of that, I remember, I mean, I studied with Tommy Joyce for a while and I remember going and, and, you know, him telling certain people certain things and then they come home and they tell their students, that's how they have to do it. And yet we all got different interpretations of what Guruji wanted. And, and we all came home and said that that was like the curriculum for everyone we worked with, even though he was, telling people slightly different things and maybe mm-hmm. that was his genius maybe not i mean i don't i don't really know i have i have mixed feelings on the whole thing i think there's something really great to a set sequence and also something very limiting to a set sequence um but i mean even within that set sequence he was telling people different things and we were taking it back home and going this is the way <laughs> right right <laughs> which is silly <laughs> yeah i and don't then, know oh, i mean the brilliant the, the the brilliant part of it is now you know you get to come to a place where you're like actually let's discover what way or what not way or how we shift or how we change yeah and i think there's pros and cons to that i mean i think that can be scary too because now you open up pandora's box of like really we could do anything really I mean, I do think there's some freedom in that, but are we, mm, I don't know. Is there something sacred to how we've done it? And is there something in, obviously we need some formatting. And like, I remember probably 10 years ago or so when I left the Ashtanga lineage and started like really moving out on, on my own into vinyasa uncharted territory of like, holy cow, what do I do now that I don't have like a guru and a teacher? And like, it was scary, you know, to be like, so I can do anything. <laughs> what do I do? I feel like you're, you're doing the Smithers hands right now. I can do anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Good, and I think that it's a it's an interesting time for yoga. I think you know modern yoga has that balance of of being able to like open our eyes up to the fact that there can be many w- different ways to do things. You know, and and. Mm. And it's tricky because, you know, everyone has their own different take. And I think from a um, more of an orthopedics perspective, it can be scary because I think there are a lot of yoga teachers who who know enough about anatomy and orthopedics to 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 say some things that aren't necessarily always completely accurate because you don't know what you don't know until you don't know until you know it right and and i'm not saying everyone needs a medical degree in fact you know i i feel like a lot of times when we first started doing the yoga medicine trainings a lot of people left feeling that way and i think it's the opposite like the grass is always greener as a medical professional like Um, you have a lot of freedom and a lot of, a lot of benefit to being a yoga teacher, to living in the experience and not having to have all the answers. And like, I I have mixed feelings about, I love, I personally love anatomy and biomechanics and all of that in yoga, but I do think it can be a limiting factor as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many interesting things too, coming out of like, like the fact that we have a whole department on placebo at Harvard, <laughs> like the, to me, I've, I've spoken with the, the, one of the guys who runs it. It's like, to me, that's just the power of the mind. And then sometimes I just go, God, maybe we just need to forget all of this anatomy stuff and just like focus on what we focus on, you know, like looking at the power of the mind, there's so much to it. And so I, I think anatomy and biomechanics, all that stuff is wonderful, but I, I think the hard thing for us is remembering that there's always more to the story. There's a lot more to the story. Just uh, like, just cause you said it, this is uh, uh, like one thing that always drives me insane. I used to work at a studio 
uh, which shall not be named. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of fresh teachers at this studio. It's their kind of their model where they just bring people and they crank them in and they crank them out. And it's, it's, it's that kind of place. And I would hear these teachers that had been teaching for like maybe, maybe six months. And someone would be like, oh, you know, my hip really hurts. And they'd be like, oh, you should do this, this, and this. Well, I'd be sitting back there and being like, you are not a physical therapist. You did a 200-hour teacher training. And like, how are you giving someone this advice on how to take care of an injury? Like your, <laughs> your, your certificate was how to teach this sequence in this classroom setting. And that's it, you know? We forget that we have to like leave if you've done the study, you know, like, like, and again, if you've done the study and you've gone and done that work, that's one story, but like people, like just random people being like, do this, this, and this. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have always this interesting view, I think on both of those, I think there's, there's, there's power to so many different things. And and I agree. I think it can be kind of, especially, I think it's partly how they phrase it. You know, when they, when, as a teacher, I talk to people, if I'm saying it, like it's a diagnosis and a treatment and I'm their doctor, that's a really different thing than just like, Hey, try this. Maybe it's helpful because, you know, I mean, we all see this brand new teachers who give out poses and the student comes back and it's like, it's magical. They, they're like, Oh my gosh, you fixed, you know, you, you helped everything. And that's, and that's great. I think if they're being helpful, I think that's wonderful. And, and the biomechanics and all of that stuff, I'm not saying there's not a place for that. I just, I think there's a balance to all of it, you know, like new teachers can yeah. be super helpful. And I think, yeah, we should be really, I think all of us should be careful you know, when we're giving out things as if it's a medical treatment, you know, as a pretending like we're their physical therapist, which is, you know, in the U.S., really the only lawsuits we see with yoga are when, you know, the, the student has thought, you know, when, when they're working within a healthcare provider's office and the student thought they were a doctor, which is, mm, you know, most of yeah. the problems we run into. But, you know, I think if we're clear about what our place is and about really our job being a to be of service to them, I don't think we can go wrong. If it comes from a place of like wanting to help people and offering them things to explore on their own so that they remember that they're the one in charge rather than me being the dictator and telling them what they need to do. I think, I think that's a really powerful place. Yeah, that makes sense. I I agree. I agree. I I totally agree with your, with your trainings that you run now and like how many trainings are you guys doing a year and how often do you guys run them? Um, we usually have something every month, um, maybe 12 to 15 a year or so. It sounds like I need to jump into one of them soon. (laughs) (laughs) I feel feel like I need to come and hang out. I've been following you for so long. It's about that time. (laughs) Yeah. I'd love to have you. Yeah. We, we, we've, you know, branched out now. We've got some interesting, really cool specialists in different departments to, um, kind of leading some of our programs as well, which is really fun. So we do like orthopedic programs, which are like shoulder, hip, spine kind of stuff or internal, what we call internal medicine, which is like nervous system or, um, cardiovascular system or, uh, next a week from now, I have my training on women's health and, um, looking at that. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Right now we're working on a program actually for for doctors. So trying to kind of oh, wow. take it all full circle and get it into the medical schools, mainly for doctors to help prevent burnout um, yeah. and mental health issues, but also trying to give them the resources they need to understand how to refer to teachers. So, you know, understanding basics about different styles and things so that they can um, use it with their patients. Cause there's so many doctors, which is, I think was your question a while ago that I never really answered, which was what really led me to developing yoga medicine was just really seeing the need for it back, you know, 15 years ago or so when I was seeing patients and, 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 you know, working with, with, um, a variety of medical providers in my practice and, and feeling the need for them to really want to use yoga. They were really interested and this was in Portland, you know, so, uh, people are obviously different in different parts of the country, but you know, on the West coast, people were definitely really interested in it, but you know, how do you refer someone to yoga? And, and really as a doctor, if you know, even a little bit about yoga, you know, that it's pretty negligent to reverse someone to yoga because they could end up jumping around or chanting or lying on their back or, you know, who knows what, <laughs> or, as we know, different, <laughs> very different credentials. Maybe someone did a weekend course. Maybe someone's been studying for 20 years. Right, so. right totally. 
God forbid they start chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Which all could be how any one of those things could be helpful or not, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm dying because I was like anti-chanting when I first started yoga. Now I'm like jam. I like all I want to do is hang out with my harmonium. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it all has to play. Everything does. I mean, I, and nowadays we see all sorts of things like acro or slack line or goat yoga, which I don't know really where those belong in the therapeutic modality, but I think there's an important, <laughs> an important place for them. And, and I guess you could say that letting go and having fun is, is a therapeutic modality. Um, 100%. Uh, that's yeah. a really good point, actually. Yeah. Like what, what is, uh, and who are we to say what's right? Again, Laughter. who are we to say what's right, what's wrong? Yeah. The best yeah, forward. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best kept secret right there. Yeah, that's so true, man. I love it. Tiffany, thank you so much for just taking some time out and chatting with me today. It's, I mean, I don't think I've laughed this much on the show so far. So you, you win that award. <laughs> it's been cool to just, uh, to, to follow you and see what you're doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm in awe about how, just how much you put out there and your programs are just absolutely brilliant. I've known a few practitioners that have studied with you, a few studio owners that have had you and everyone just always comes back like, whoa, mind blown. So wow, uh, nice. thank you so much for, for sharing your, your gifts to the community, but also for coming and hanging out with the show and chatting and it up today. Speaking of gifts to the community, if you are interested, you can also check out our nonprofit on there as well. We have a a nonprofit where we have just built a new shelter in, in India that, that um, gives back to a culture that's really given us so much by um, really providing for women who have been rescued from, from trafficking and other social injustices. Oh, I love that. I'll make sure I put the links. Skills. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I put the links to that in the show notes so people can go check Thank it out. We, we love supporting Yay. like all, all the things there. So Awesome. Until the next Yogi Misfit session, this is Danny and Tiffany saying peace out. Peace out. <laughs>